was the nearest city only a two-hour drive away from the Chernobyl nuclear accident. A visit to the Chernobyl Museum in Kyiv is a must. So the accident happened at night on the 26th of April in 1986 and the first ones to fight the fight flames were firefighters who came from nearby fire stations but they hadn't any protection from radiation. Nobody was prepared to the accident. So in the Luba Pinkula talks me through the steps of the unfolding drama starting with an explosion at nuclear reactor number four and resulting in tons of radioactive gases and particles blowing up into the skies. Firemen, engineers, and the military struggled to contain the meltdown, but nobody told the residents of Pripyat, the adjacent modern city designed to house the nuclear plant workers, that anything was amiss for two days. In this original archive footage shot the morning after the explosion, while an invisible cloud of radiation particles rained down on them, 50,000 people went about their daily lives. So you can see a usual day and the life of an ordinary town. But this town was very close to the site of the accident, with weddings, walking on the streets. When people saw armored troop carriers on the streets and they were asking, what's going on, what happened? The explanation was, oh, nothing serious, nothing terrible. But they're washing the streets. Yeah, to suppress the radioactive dust. Uh -huh. White flashes, you can notice, appearing from time to time, is radiation that goes through the film and spoils it. Mm. At midday, on the 27th of April, there was an announcement of the temporary evacuation on the local radio. So people were informed, three days, you're coming back, you have to take documents, money, food and water for a three-day period of time. Right. So they thought they were going away briefly. Yes, and they will come back soon. But it was forever. The same officials who once described Chernobyl as equally safe as driving a car had not made any provisions for an accident of this magnitude and had to improvise a way to clean up and then contain the flood of radiation rising from the imploded reactor. But remote-controlled electronic equipment and heavy machinery was rendered useless by radiation interference. They had to resort to the most primitive means, bare hands and shovels. Here, you will watch clean up on the roof of the neighboring reactor that was close to the exploded one. Young soldiers with shovels in their hands had to clean up the radioactive fragments. So How long could they be exposed? Just two minutes. Each work shift lasted only two minutes for each group of four soldiers. But these guys knew that two minutes of shoveling, two minutes of work, and they were in the army service was over. That was a deal. Two minutes instead of two years of the army. So most of them took the deal? Of course. Statistics from the disaster are unreliable, but some authorities believe that only a quarter of the soldiers survived. Blown by strong, unpredictable winds, the first 10 days of the deadly radiation cloud is depicted as a ghostly blob over most of Europe, as far as Sweden and Ireland, and eventually circling the Northern Hemisphere three times in the first year. From Kyiv, I travel two hours north to the town of Chernobyl, on the edge of the official exclusion zone. Once through the barriers, I continue north about nine miles to the ghost town of Pripyat, and finally, just a few miles beyond that, to the infamous reactor number four. You need to reserve in advance with a specialized tour agency. You must bring your passport, and it costs around $160 a person for the day, including the van that picks you up from your hotel in Kyiv. Sergei Ivanchuk, my guide, is waiting for me at the border of the exclusion zone, the Chernobyl checkpoint. Though they call it a dead zone, there are actually several thousand security and maintenance staff and scientific researchers who pass through every day, and everybody must exit via a radiation monitor that checks their exposure levels. So right now we are in Chernobyl, the capital of, of the exclusion zone. That's where the visitors, they make first stop. Uh -huh. Because and this, this is yeah, this is the only place where they have like a restaurant. Yes. 
asked. So. I was, I was the, I didn't want to ask. Another important thing they have to do, they have to sign a paper. Uh -huh. A release or something? Yeah. So some, some of it's standard, no weapons, drugs, no drinking. Don't smoke. Don't smoke, Don't right. inhale deep at work. No open-toed shoes, no, no, less skin showing, right? Correct. Okay. Uh, right, and stick with you. Do what you say, basically. Now, accompanied by my guide and a Geiger counter, we're ready to head into the zone. Usually, we turn our Geiger counters once we get into the, to the 10 kilometers zone. The normal reading, usually, if you check, like in Kiev or other cities in Ukraine, 12, 14, 18 microvolts an hour. Mm -hmm. Well, here it gets, of course, higher because of the contamination. Let's find out how the radiation levels are changing since while we are cl getting closer to the mm -hmm. power plant. And it's not a deadly, 150. If Wait, we so come it's 12 close, in Kiev and it's 150 here? Yeah, but um, if you take it with you on the airplane, you measure it could be 500, depending you know, where you are. So, okay. acceptable still. So, it's acceptable. So you carry this around. What are, we, what are you learning from this? You're learning um, different radiation levels. Okay, yeah, this is one thing. And this is the, the just warning you. Like, you can, you can be any places here. I mean, it, you have to have it with you. It's just... Because you can, uh, let's say if you... There are places by the cooling towers, and you go, and there's a piece of stone, it looks like, but you st stay there, and the radiation is much higher. So this thing will tell you, hey, hey, mm. exposure, that's what we worry about. You don't have to be exposed to radiation. Mm. I mean, unnecessary exposure. After 25 years, the abandoned city of Pripyat is fading. Stripped by vandals and looters of everything from bathroom fixtures to scrap metal, while the forest slowly takes over the roads and decaying buildings. So this is a famous Pripyat playground with the Ferret Wheel. Here's a glimpse of the post-apocalypse. What happens when human life suddenly disappears from a city? So this is um, what would used to be a prepaid hotel. The only prepaid hotel name of the hotel was Policia. It means like a forest, forest land. Can we go in? I will go in, still can come on top of the hotel and see. There's a nice view from there. You have to use staircase, as you understand the lift is out of order. Yeah. <laughs> Chernobyl power plant, just three kilometers from here. Oh, yeah. And even from here you can see some, some buildings are ready to collapse. So they've given up, this will never be inhabited again. Oh, that's for sure, yeah, that's 100%. Believe it or not, around 7,000 visitors a year sign up for this kind of tour, and interest is growing. What kind of visitors do you get here? Uh, lots of students, lots of people who remember the time of the accident. They were like, probably my age. And even younger gener generation, those that play Doom or you know, some games on the computer, so even then they start to come and they, they all recognize Prepy and the buildings and, uh, you know, Kind of interesting for them. It's on a video game, you're saying? Yeah, it's on a video game. Oh, I didn't know that. <sighs> so I'm doing a trip to Ukraine. It's my first time here. And I figured since I'm already here, it's something that was a big part of my childhood hearing about Chernobyl and, and the opportunity to see it, I didn't think it was something I wanted to miss. I know a couple of other people who ended up in Chernobyl and I just decided to might as well check it out while I'm in the country. It's like not a usual activity for people to do. Where are we headed now? 
Uh, Kindergarten. This was the kindergarten? Yep. And when they started the evacuation, they basically just left everything? Uh, in the kin kindergarten, yes. They took nothing out of sight. Just right. And there's all the little beds for them to have their naps on? The, this was the older group, like for older kids. Uh huh. It's like a picture of a moment, huh? Yeah. It's the library. Where are the no-go zones here? Where can't we go in here? Um, out of respect, we don't go to people's apartment. But are there places that are so hot you can't go? Yeah, there are, like school number one, hospital. It's still creation a little bit higher, so make, make, it makes people nervous. Music store? That looks like music store, yeah. Finally, we head a few miles up the road to the epicenter of the accident, the nuclear power plant itself. It's hard to forget that all that separates us from an underground lake of hot, molten, radioactive lava is a decaying cement sarcophagus that should have been replaced years ago. Okay, so this is it. This is reactor number four? Yes, this is the famous reactor number four. I mean, it looks like an old factory. What's the radiation levels? Here, let's check it. I don't know. It's uh, 340. So if you let's check, you got, the closer you get to the reactor, kind of the little higher it gets. Let's go down to where you won't get, you won't get that high. So what's this compared to when we were out on the road? Or it's Four times more probable than it was on the road. Four times more? Yeah, okay. but a million times more. And we're, what, a few hundred yards from the reactor? It looks exactly. good. And that does not look good. I mean, there's rust, and it looks completely decrepit. The plans for building a more secure cover have been mired down by bureaucracy, politics, and economic woes as projected costs escalate every year. I'm not trying to be dramatic, I'm actually very curious, because it is leaking now, right? I mean, yes, there is a potential risk. What can happen, the worst scenario, if the roof fall, roof fall down, it hits the bottom where the radioactive uh, lava is, because of the impact, that could be an explosion even, this something is radioactive waste, radioactive materials, I mean, it should be scary. <laughs> There is a 5 p.m. curfew for all visitors, but we managed to squeeze in a detour into the limbo land between the nuclear plant and the security checkpoint.